So it's only been less than a day since we brought the wine must or juice home, unfermented. I chucked in the yeast around 11 o'clock last night. It is now 7 in the evening, the next day. And as you can see here, we have a good head of foam bubbled up already in less than 24 hours from the yeasts themselves. What they're doing right now is they're converting sugar into alcohol. And in addition to that, all that bubbling is CO2, another byproduct of the yeast. And that CO2 presently is blanketing the wine, protecting the wine from oxygen. So I don't have to worry about it going to vinegar. It's going to be fine. Um, what it's doing is just helping to keep that oxygen off. But what I need to do, though, to keep the yeasts alive and keep the yeast happy is they not only need sugar to live, they need oxygen. So I have to stir the little yeasties. So, here we go. You. <laughs> It's really gross. This is a pretty thick foam on top, which is fairly typical of 71B 1122 yeast from Lavalin. It's a very high, strong, pungent, kind of bready, yeasty certainly, but uh, a lot of the kind of more tropical fruit esters are coming through as well right now. It looks really golden, but it's quite clear when you just have it in a glass. It's just there's so much liquid here. There's about seven gallons. What we're going to do now is put the hydrometer into the wine. The hydrometer tells you the density of sugar that's in the wine. and also shows you the potential alcohol at that point. Um, since we just got the wine in and the yeasts haven't fermented the sugar too much yet, it's only been a few hours really, um, we'll see what it says. So when you put it in, you just let it settle after it stops bouncing for a while. And that will tell you what the residual sugar still is in the grape must. So as it bounces around, you see that it's kind of near around f just a below 15, pushing around 18 or 19 bricks. That's roughly around 10% potential alcohol. What that means is, basically, at this stage, the wine has a potential alcohol to go of 10%. If I let it ferment completely dry and let the sugars ferment into alcohol, and I'll have roughly around 10, maybe 11 percent alcohol in the, in the final product, just because the sugars in the grapes were that, at that level. As we keep fermenting, though, the hydrometer will drop lower and lower and lower because the sugar density is decreasing and converting into alcohol.